Okay, guys, I'm here live with John. Good to see you, mate. And you. Um, so we've had a fair few questions come through on, on that particular um, session, mate. Uh, there's a, a, a lot of absolute rippers here. Um, one of the first ones that's come through from the audience is, uh, and I think you and I were chatting about this one before, but are there other, some other examples outside of the Circular Key project um, where you've done similar stuff with GIS and BIM? Yeah, absolutely. Uh, it's a good question, actually, because uh, it's been quite a change in the last couple of years in being engaged earlier in the piece, uh, for, particularly for major projects. We're currently involved in the Snowy Hydro uh, 2.0 project, uh, which is a large oh, infrastructure yeah, project. Close to home for me. Yeah, absolutely. And um, there's been the nature of that project. Um, it's over quite a wide area, so there's a, um, a lot of... Uh, the data that we've originally uh, worked into is, is geographic data, GIS data, uh, geotech data. Um, so, the, and ultimately the delivery platform for that project will be an ESRI based project um, platform. Um, whereas all the design modeling is being done in Revit, Civil 3D, a whole myriad of different applications okay. being used. Um, so being able to bring that all together on one platform, an ESRI platform is a real bonus for that project. Oh, great! Yeah, I've heard a lot of I've heard a lot of awesome um, news out of that project. You know, as I mentioned before, it's a bit closer to home there uh, with them. I think their their headquarters is in Cooma there, up around Jindabyne. So, so yeah, great stuff. Yeah, sure. um, the yeah. second one that uh, the second question that's come through: uh, Have you automated the process for bringing BIM data into ArcGIS Pro from ProjectWise? Yeah. Again, that's a really good question. I think uh, the first answer to that is, uh, as, a, as a company, we don't use uh, typically project-wise. We're, we're as, as our base um, CD platform for, for models, that common data environment for models. So we use BIM 360. Um, that's, uh, that gives us that, that bonus as well, because uh, with the Esri Autodesk Alliance, um, there's been a lot of work in being able to read models directly from BIM 360 into Esri. Um, we didn't implement it on this particular project. Um, we, uh, we got a fairly static model environment for, for this project because it's not a design environment, it's as built models. But certainly looking at other projects that we're now involved with, we're hosting those models on BIM 360 and we'll be implementing that automatic, um, automated publication from BIM 360 to Esri ArcGIS. Okay, great. That's um, that's a great answer there. I think I think that I think that question might have actually had two parts to it too, which I might have missed coming through there. So the the second part to that one, um, they've asked. So in addition to project wise, when the designs update, how do you how do you know to import the new how do you know when to put to import new updates of the beam into the model? Mm -hmm. Well, I think from the from this particular project's point of view, circular key, um, the model we're, we were capturing as built conditions. There's no change in design a process going on. So it was a case of capturing the models, um, um, whether or not we're producing them from scan data, production of the models. Once we validate the models, that's it. There's going to be no further change. Um, and then we'll publish them through into ArcGIS. But certainly looking at uh, uh, future projects, other projects that we're involved in now, where we're involved in the design and publication of models, then that's where we will be using the automation of, or semi-automation if you like, and being able to uh, approve a model for publication and then automate that publication, uh, typically overnight, um, to push it through into uh, Esri ArcGIS. Okay, what, and just out of curiosity there, what, what does the automation piece for you there? Well, that's something we're working with Esri on at the moment because the, the BIM 360 uh, connection is uh, now available in the latest version of ArcGIS. So we're looking at, um, as, as, as a new um, tool for us, um, and looking at the, the those automation tools that uh, are available from Esri um, and that with that BIM 360 integration. So it's not something we've used at this time, but um, it's something we'll be using um, in the future. Yeah. Oh, sounds great. I, I haven't heard of that one either. So oh, great stuff. All righty, excellent answer. Um, so on to the next one there. Um, how did, this is a bit more of a, a business side question. Uh, how did Norman, Disney and Young 
approach the requirements associated with heritage buildings? I think um, from this project's point of view, there are a number of heritage items around the site. And uh, I think from, from our point of view, it's making sure that we captured those um, initially. Um, in our initial discussions and, and ongoing discussions with the client, it was a case of that we needed to capture them in um, a significant level of detail. So yeah. um, whereas we could perhaps deliver uh, what we term an LOD 200, a sort of uh, um, an approximate uh, geometry, if you like, on some of the, the data that was captured. Uh, when it came to the heritage uh, details, um, and I'll pick on items like the hand railing around circular key um, and various other elements, the plaques that are that you'll see of you as you walk around circular yeah. key that are in the in the paving there. It's about capturing those accurately. Um, and then also capturing the, the photographs as well, so at, so that we got a, a, a very good record of uh, all of those heritage items, um, and then link them back through into the model. So there was a method of delivering all of this data, um, so that you could see, uh, identify the heritage elements, and also click through links to to get more information about them. Okay, great. So I've just had a message come through there saying that we've probably got time for, for two more questions. So I'll have to, mm -hmm. let me have a look at the, the, the next two that have come through. Um, so the, the next one that's jumped up on the list is, how do you manage the various data formats across geotechnical, BIM and GIS? Yeah. Well, on this project and, 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 and when I talk about Snowy uh, Hydro as well, we're, we're dealing with a number of different uh, uh, formats and data formats uh, uh, mm -hmm. coming in, be the model-based or tabular um, database information. And I think from from our point of view, is that we we basically put a workflow together for each of those uh, different datas, um, where they originate from, what format we're receiving them in, or what options of formats we receive them in, and then ultimately what the path is of what we need to do to get them into uh, into Revit in initially from a modeling point of view, and then ultimately deliver them to to ArcGIS. So it's um, it's a bit of a, uh, a mix and match of those different um, applications. We're getting geotech information, leapfrog data, um, civil 3D, um, all these different data formats. Um, as well as Revit and base AutoCAD formats, and just putting a workflow together to manage that data so that we can publish it uh, efficiently. Okay, and is it is it Esri's workflow manager that helps with that? Out of curiosity, or is that or is that something else that does that bit? I think we we um, because we were able to manage this project basically all inside of Revit, we, Revit and we needed to do a lot of work inside of Revit. Um, a lot of those workflows were managed. Um, at that level, so that we, a big part of our task was actually the modeling um, and then uh, incorporating the data, um, the information that was required in the models. So um, we had the, the nice ease, uh, we found a very easy part of uh, the integration with Esri is that we could very easily push those Revit models with all of that, that data and the data links intact um, direct from Revit um, without any other um, uh, tools or, or workflows required. Okay, great. Alrighty, so we've just got time for one more question there. Um, and this one is a little bit around the project schedule. Um, so it says here, how did you manage the project schedule around the Vivid Festival? And, and I, right. guess, I, guess, I guess the context there is, did GIS help with that? I'm thinking the context might be. Yeah. Yeah, I think, uh, uh, and I think we talked about this earlier before we went online, it, was, it would have been um, uh, an ideal opportunity for us to be engaged earlier in the project so that we could use um, the tool set for that because there's there's definite benefits that we see now on, on projects we're involved in now in that planning stage, the stakeholder engagement, uh, being able to manage the, uh, the as, exactly as you say, the, the project and the schedule around uh, other events that are going on in that particular area. So Vivid was a particular um, challenge for us, but it really, from a site works point of view, yeah, it just we stopped 
<laughs> we, we need to be off site uh, at the beginning of uh, Vivid and then obviously wait for that mm -hmm. to finish to get back on site again. Um, from a planning point of view, I think uh, we could have taken a lot of advantages from the Esri platform, particularly with, when you're involved in such a, uh, uh, a busy uh, piece of infrastructure like Circular Key. There's so much going on there and the ability to, if we were engaged earlier, to, to get realise that benefit out of the platforms, um, being able to manage the project. Um, and it's certainly what we're using uh, the platforms for now. Okay. Okay. So thank you. So I'm hearing that GIS could have helped if we're engaged a bit more. So great to hear. Um, so that's sadly, mate, that's about all we have time for for the questions today. But uh, thank you so mm -hmm. much. I know I learned a lot that I didn't know. Uh, thanks very much.